still asleep. I know you're probably wondering why I'd want to get out of bed with a bombshell like my girlfriend. But Saturdays are the only days I get to play Xbox undisturbed. It's come to that. But I mean, after five years in a relationship, I mean, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't do drugs, I don't go to titty bars anymore. she's let go of my hand, I'm still touching her. Okay, the next move is crucial. If not performed perfectly, it could result into two more hours of cuddling. Wish me luck. What are you doing? Hold me, babe. she do that? She clearly sees that I'm immersed in my video game. But nah. She can't ask questions and stuff. Babe, pizza and soda this early in the morning? Uh-huh. I said... <laughs> okay. When is she gonna learn as a guy? I have a genetic predisposition to hear a maximum of eight words in any given sentence. I mean, anything beyond that is like dolphin talk. John! Are you even listening to me? Yes. Okay, then tell me, what did I say? Do you ask? You said how long I've been out here. And? And... Oh my god. Oh my god. You didn't even hear. You weren't even listening. I asked you about the pizza. Did you want a slice? <sighs> what? Nothing. Nothing. See what I did there? By playing totally stupid, this allows me to throw the dummy card at any given moment thus clearing me from any true responsibility in future questionings. Okay, in 10 minutes, when you're done with your game... 10 minutes? I just got... gonna... Yes? Hey, welcome to Native Talk. My name is Caroline Felicity Anton, and I'm the host of Native Talk. Today we have a special guest, John Proudstar. He's a multi-talented Native American who is very proud to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, John. Good to be here. Thank you for having me on the show. Um, John, I met John when he was just, um, what we do? Yes is Better Than No? Yeah, Yes is Better Than No, a short film for Pima College. Actually, we met earlier than that. Yeah. When you were trying to promote um, Tribal Force? Yeah. Uh, Tribal Force is the uh, first Native American superhero comic book, and uh, mm -hmm. I designed it uh, back in 96. That was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Have you made any since then? Uh, we're, de we're developing Tribal Force again, and uh, we're also doing a comic book uh, called
called uh, My Brothers and Sisters House, which you're very familiar with, <laughs> seeing how you created it. <laughs> but that's what we're doing right now. Well, um, when I met John, we, we met on the set of uh, Yes is Better Than No from Pima College. That was their, um, I think their graduation project. Mm -hmm. And that was an awesome project. We worked on there for five days. Um, from 6 to 6, sometimes to 10, sometimes to midnight. Yeah. So, um, and then um, I guess we just started talking again and we started doing some projects together. Yeah, the um, Yes is Better Than No, I really like doing that because um, it was the first time I, I believe that the Don Autumn language was used in, in a film. And I knew that was going to be something huge, you know. Uh, you know, anything to do with Native American subject matter that that I feel is going to help the Native community, I'm, I would really like to be a part of. And when I heard about that, I'm like, I got to be in here, you know. And I was really surprised to see you. And um, I do know that you've had some shows. Uh, one of the films was just on that you produced. And how many movies have you produced? Well, produced. Uh, I, I produced Dude Vision was my first short film, and I had done that right out of the Sundance Director's Lab in '05. Uh, I had had a meeting with Robert Redford and told him what I wanted to do, and I was a little insecure because everybody wanted me to be like Chris Eyre and direct the kind of things that Chris Eyre was doing, uh, like Skinwalkers and Smoke Signals, and I I didn't want to do that. I'm I'm a comedian. I want to be funny, and uh, Hollywood doesn't allow natives to be funny, so. <laughs> Uh, Redford was the one that said, you know, do it. Do what you want to do. Do what, you know, do the stories that mean something to you. So I came back to Tucson and I produced and directed and wrote and acted <laughs> <laughs> in one Dude Vision. Show. Yeah, you kind of have to be. No, I, I had a lot of tremendous help on Dude Vision. Uh, Steve Bayless, who was the editor, Tina Huerta, they dumped thousands of hours of their life into Dude Vision. Uh, Juan Heinrich, who did uh, special effects. Gus Kiriakakis, who was the cameraman, Paul Klinko, who donated all the equipment. So I had a lot of help locally. Mm -hmm. uh, it just wasn't a one-man show. You, you can't do that. You, you know, making films is like an orchestra. Every instrument is integral, and, uh, and they were. They, I mean, without them, I wouldn't have been able to produce Dude Vision. But uh, we just produced our first short uh, Proud Star Entertainment Group and Painting with Light Pictures and Skyfire Pictures. We all teamed up and we produced a romantic comedy called Just Sampling that I wrote and directed and I'm one of the lead actors. Uh, the goal, my goal is to get more indigenous people, uh, Native Americans and Latinos as lead characters. Um, I also work on uh, the Thana Autumn Reservation at Baba Kivri and I have a class of students that are comprised of I think 98% TO kids. and. Uh, Deandra Porter did her first film, Toxic Terror. It's the first uh, short zombie film, T.O. zombie film ever done. And uh, Denny Galvez is on her way here to doing her first short. And um, these are groundbreaking kids because they're the first kids or people out of their tribe that'll be hopefully be the future filmmakers um, out of the T.O. nation. I do know that we've done some projects as well on um with work, working with Native kids, and how surprised are you with their talents and skills? Uh, shocked. I I didn't want to go there <laughs> when they offered me the job. I was like, oh my God, Baba Kivri, you know, Tapawa, that's like way out there. <laughs> and I had heard these horrible things about the kids. And so I went with an open mind, and I was shocked at how, how smart, uh, how creative, uh, and and plus they're awesome kids. You know you can't you can't run a program and not like the kids. And that was my biggest worry with that I wasn't going to like them. Uh, but uh, you know uh, I, I really like the kids there. They're awesome kids and they're they're fascinated by the motion picture industry and they have the same curiosity that I have. That how come their people aren't being featured in films? You know why aren't they allowed to portray themselves? Why aren't they allowed to tell stories from their perspective? Uh, so that curiosity is great because I can I can work with that. Mm -hmm. I can teach them how to make their own pictures, and eventually, you know, they'll be making their own motion pictures. But the talent level is just through the roof. Uh, acting, directing, writing, um, 
it, they're shockingly good, and a lot of their stories revolve around cultural stories that mean something to them. Right. Uh, you know, and it's it's good to see that the TO people have kept that rich in their culture, and kids are like a barometer of a of a society. You can always tell what kind of society that you're in by looking at the kids, and the kids are just awesome kids. I mean, they have problems like any other you know nationalities would. But you can tell that the Autumn culture is very important to, to the Autumn because the kids know about it. If it wasn't, these kids <laughs> would be like, what are you talking about, you know? Right. But a lot of them do know the language. A lot of them do know their history and do know, you know, the stories that are important to them. So what I'm trying to do is give them the skills that they need to capture all those stories for their people. I mean, a lot of the kids, they're middle schoolers, so they're not interested in doing documentaries and stuff. Right. They want to do fun stuff like zombie movies or action adventure and that's great but eventually as they mature these are the people that are going to be doing the documentaries and the things that are uh, super important to the Donald Optum Nation. And um, because you're Native American and how you grew up mm -hmm. what are some of the sil similarities? What between me and the Autumn? Or, mm -hmm. or just in just in the way you were growing up? Well, Did you want to be an actor oh or yeah. producer since Day one since or day one, since eight years old, since my grandmother explained to me what movies was, that it's a job, and these people go and do that for a job and get paid. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's like playing all day. You know? <laughs> and that's what I wanted to do. I want to play all day. I'm 42 years old, and I still want to play all day, you know? Uh, the similarities between me and the Autumn, uh, yeah, it's just you meet each other, and you kind of already know each other. You know, mm -hmm. you grow up poor, and without the benefits that other people have, there's this simpatico between you, uh, where it, it's hard growing up poor, because when you don't have the neat clothes, and you don't have money to buy things when other kids do, and you grow up on, you know, potatoes and spam, and mm -hmm. that's what you eat all week, and, you know, you're lucky to get Chinese food, that's the big thing, you know, let's <laughs> go to the store and get Chinese food or chicken wings or something, when those are the things that you look forward to, uh, I see that in their eyes and, and you know and I see that concern that they don't fit into the real world uh, you know or the non-Indian world because there are two worlds mm -hmm. you know you grow up on the res Definitely. or you grow up in a impoverished area you don't feel like you're a part of the community of Tucson because you think I'll never get to go to college I'll ne never get to drive a nice car you know I'll never get to have those nice things that people just seem to just have, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the way I felt. I, I thought I would never be able to own a car. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, that's just way out there. Um, yeah, so it, it was really easy for me to get along with them because we kind of came from the same world. I was raised in the city. Uh, I'm, I'm Yaqui and I'm also Jewish and Latino. Uh, and I didn't quite fit in any of those worlds. You know, I didn't fit within the Yaqui community because of my Mexican and Jewish blood. So I was kind of always on the outside. And then with the Latinos, I didn't fit in with them because uh, I hung around a lot of, you know, gangsters in the day. And I wasn't into violence or anything like that. And um, so, you know, you're always in, and I didn't know anything about the Jewish world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you, you always feel on the outside. So I guess that's why I get along with them so well because I, I feel like I'm on the outside. And I right. think that's the way they feel, that they're not truly in but they want to be in, and they want their people to be in, and, and that's a powerful tool. Uh, eventually, they're going to figure out what they need to do as a tribe to start developing their own movie stars and their own directors and their own writers. That doesn't happen by accident. Mm -hmm. People don't just stumble into becoming movie stars. Hollywood develops those people. Right. High-powered agents back them up with a lot of money and a lot of teaching, and they create opportunities for those people. And that's what we as a people, uh, Native Americans or the indigenous population of America, needs to start doing. We need to start investing in our own. Right. And we're not. We're not doing that. We, we still go to the movies. We watch all the movies with the movie stars that we admire, mm -hmm. that are non-Indians. But it's not going to be until we as a people demand that our movie stars get put in movies. And when those movies get made, we go see them along with the other. You know, when you make anything Native American, <laughs> It's not natives that watch it, <laughs> you know. It's non-natives that watch it. 
which hey that's cool i'm all for that but as a people we need to start right. supporting our own you know causes and, and and material i remember i when i first started wanting to do a talk show or wanting to do something i actually uh, a friend of mine took me to palm springs mm. and they had a film festival and there was this group of people who did a um, film on Navajos. It was called Turquoise Rose. Yeah, yeah. That, it just blew me away. And I was like, that's what I want to do. And, and it wasn't a big promotion. It wasn't yeah. a big film. And it was just simple. And it was all Navajo cast. But the director was a young white kid. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he got the sense of it, I yeah. think. Well, it's important that they do. Yes, um, and he was very respectful and stuff, but I was like thinking, God, when are we going to do this? When are we going to step up to the plate and start challenging our kids to do that? So now, now is, now yeah. <laughs> with Denny Galvez and Deandra Porter, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully these are going to be the next generation, uh, you know, and teaching them how to direct and how to tell a story in a visual medium. It's all new for them. and. And sometimes I'm really hard on them. Uh, I'm sure the kids will tell you that. <laughs> I'm very strict with them when it comes to filmmaking, and I'm very hard on them. And I forget how young they are. And mm -hmm. I keep, there's, there's a moment where I think I'm working with a con contemporary, you know? But then I got to remind myself, oh my God, she's only 13 years old. <laughs> <laughs> or she's only 16 years old. And, you know, when I was 16, I was getting handcuffed in, in the principal's office. And <laughs> I didn't have a plan or anything. I wasn't doing anything as great as they're doing. Yeah. And, uh, and I think it's hard for them to realize sometimes how great what they're doing is because they're in a microcosm of, of you know, to power or cells that they don't see that. Um, so I try to remind them, you're doing something great here. And, you know, as a kid, you think, ah, we're just shooting these hokey little videos. But in 10 years from now, we're going to look back at that and say, wow, those were the first. Mm -hmm. Those were the George Lucases, the Steven Spielbergs right. uh, of our, you know, f of the First Nation, which I like to refer to us as because we were the First Nation uh, before the Europeans came over. Uh, the Latinos and Native Americans, we were here first right. which makes us first nation <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah I think it's really important what we're doing with the kids in cells uh, because like I said this is where it all begins and you know people our age and older we had to grow up with seeing Italians play us in movies you know we had to grow up where watching films where we're the bad guy and even now it's still I feel it's still kind of ridiculous because whenever we're featured on a TV show or something the story like there's something in the story that says why the Indian is there you know because they're at a casino or because the shaman did something and you always hear an eagle or a snake in the background and mm -hmm. it just shows or you or a flute and it shows you that America hasn't accepted us yet that we're, we're still furniture we're still props in a movie or a TV show uh, we don't get the girl at the end or the guy however you want to play that uh, we're not the hero. We're always <laughs> the one with the problem learning from the non-Indians, you know, learning something that they know more than us. Um, and I want to end that because our children, our children deserve better than that. Mm -hmm. And and we deserved better than that as uh, when we were younger. Unfortunately, we didn't get that. But we survived and that's why we're here now. And that's what we're trying to give to our youth is that they don't experience the same prejudices and racism that we had to go through to get here. Right. You know, and, and you know what that's like. You know, mm -hmm. uh, being a native woman on top of everything, mm -hmm. <laughs> native and female, uh, how badly you were treated just in public. Right. And media is a part of that. Media lends to the way people treat us. I mean, we still have baseball teams that have effigies of us, mm -hmm. you know, with that cartoon Native American character on the Redskins. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, if that were a black person, that would not be happening. But yet, for some reason it's it's allowed for us they can still do it and get away with it why isn't the NAACP doing something about that until America starts taking us serious as a people then the alcoholism and the drug addiction and the domestic violence is going to continue on the reservation and these children are seeing that I know I can see it in their eyes because they're around domestic violence they're around alcoholism they're around drug addiction right. and the drug dealing that goes on around cells 
and I see, I see in their eyes that they want it to stop, but they don't know how to make it stop. And hopefully this is a small piece of the puzzle that will help them change their, their environment. You know, nobody wants to live in an environment like that. You just don't. I, I, I grew up in a heavy drug, you know, environment, and I didn't want to. I just accepted it. It was just a way of life. Everyone mm -hmm. did it. Everyone sold it. You didn't know there was a difference. No, I didn't know you could live differently, except <laughs> on TV, the Brady Bunch, you know. I was just like, wow, it'd be kind of, you know, how come Greg and Marsha don't deal drugs, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, how come Marsha's not pregnant at 14, Well, they got you know? the secret. <laughs> they have the secret. They, they have just the haven't secret. told us yet. Uh, so I, I was really affected by Bill Cosby and what he had done with uh, the black community and how he had created this black family, whether a black family existed like that or not, he created an example for other black families. He had gave them permission that it's okay to be like this and all because you leave your ghetto and all because you leave the res uh, doesn't mean that you always have to be ghetto or be res all the time, that mm -hmm. you can exist in another world and you can live a healthy lifestyle and it's okay. Because it, you know how it is, like when mm -hmm. you get something good and a lot of success being Indian, you feel guilty, mm -hmm. you feel bad, you know? Uh, when I started doing films and landing roles, um, I'd done Skinwalkers, Walker, Texas Ranger, Young Guns 2, uh, I just done, did Barking Water, uh, I did Into the West with Steven Spielberg's company, and I was getting all this success and money started to come with that, and there's this part of me that I felt bad for having money, you know, being able to do stuff with money, and you just, I don't know, being Indian, you... You just feel bad for having a lot of cash, I guess. Guilty. I don't know. You feel guilty, you know? But, um, and being in media is difficult because I know you won't believe it, or whoever's watching won't believe it. Talking a lot is bad. <laughs> <laughs> and I talk a lot. <laughs> I talk a lot. If you don't shut me up, I'll control the whole show. <laughs> uh, but it is. It's a, it's a definite, we live in two worlds, and that's what the outside community doesn't understand. And I'm not looking for sympathy from the outside community. Right. I don't want sympathy. I don't want them to look at us and say, oh, poor Indians. <laughs> or look at our projects and say, oh, the project was substandard, but that's because they're Indian. I want them to look at our film the way they look at any other film. I want to be judged with other filmmakers. I want my filmmakers that I'm creating to be judged on the same line. So when they win, they right. won because they were the best filmmakers not because they were the best Indian filmmakers. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's a hard lesson, and that's, I feel that's why I'm hard on my students, because it's going to get rougher for them out there in the real world, and I want them to realize that you're going to take some punches in the face, especially for being Indian. And some of those are just simple behaviors, e being firm, being conf not confrontive, but um, ag assertive. Yeah, I'm assertive and I'm aggressive. I'm a really aggressive guy, and especially when it comes to movies, I, I get very aggressive with them. And if they don't do what they, if they don't do what they say they're gonna do, I'll get on them. Because at the end of the day, in the motion picture industry, it's not about what color you are or anything like that. It's about what can you do, how fast can you do it, and did you keep your word? Right. And if you got those three things, you will work. You will always work, no matter what or who you are. And people will help you out with your projects if they know you say what you do and do what you say. So that's, out of everything, that's the most important thing I want my students to come out with is those abilities. Mm -hmm. Because it'll work not only in motion pictures, but in a normal job. You right. know, when, when you have a job, like, like this talk show, you want people who do what they say and say what they do. Mm -hmm. Not, okay, I'll be there, and then no one shows up. <laughs> you have to be dependable. Right. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to teach my kids is that everyone's important on a film and you have to you have to keep your word so how do you how do you get that across to someone who has never had that uh... i bother them a lot <laughs> denny will tell you denny's got a real nice john frostar story <laughs> <laughs> i followed denny around campus one day she was ditching <laughs> <laughs> And boy, she was giving me and looks that would kill. Knows. She didn't even know me. I don't even <laughs> think she knew me very well. And I said, you need to go to class. She's like, I don't want to go to class. And I'm like, okay, then I'll follow you around all day. And I did. I followed her and followed her and followed her and followed her until finally she just got frustrated with me and went to class. And <laughs> that was an example of who and what I am. I won't mm -hmm. stop if I want you to do something especially if it's positive. It's not like I was forcing her to do something she didn't need to do. 
Uh, but it's important. It was important for Denny to show up to class, and it just is. It, regardless of whether a child does work in the class or not, you need to go to class. And these are the small steps that you're taking into the man or woman that you're going to become. Right. And and I um, I see something in, in certain individuals, Denny being one of them, and Deandra as well. But I see a fire in them that I had as a child, as a youth. And if if people in my life didn't step forward and guide me, mm -hmm. I don't know where I would end it up. I'm where I am today because adults took the time out to slap me on my head and say, "Hey, stupid, you know, <laughs> you're screwing up. You need to go that way instead of that way, or quit doing that and do this." And uh, I didn't get it at the time, and sometimes they got me really mad for what they did and said to me. But now, as an older guy, I can appreciate that. Right. So I think I it's don't really think important. any kid ever appreciates. Well, no, you don't like being what, told what to do. Yeah, what what you're told to do until years later, like parenting. Uh, a lot of kids don't realize what a good <laughs> parent somebody is until way later. Yeah, and I explain to my kids that the way you can tell an adult cares about you is because they're bugging you all the time. When we don't care about things, we just leave them alone mm -hmm. because it's a waste of our time. Right. And that's the worst crime, I think, teachers and role models and people that are working in the community. When you ignore a child just because they're idiots, and kids are idiots, but I love them. <laughs> uh, and you got to remember, you were an idiot at one time, too. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I give my time to a kid, that's I'm investing in that child. Mm -hmm. uh, just because I'm not throwing down $10,000 doesn't mean that it's not important. My time is just as valuable. So if when, more. If not more. So when I give that time to kids, I explain to them, I'm investing in you because I believe in you, because I think you're going to go somewhere in life. Mm -hmm. If I thought you were just going to be some murderer or end up dead in the desert with a bullet in your head, I would just walk away from you. I would not bother with you. I would leave you alone and let you implode on yourself. But the fact that I'm bugging you, the fact that I want you in my class, the fact that I'm constantly watching after you, which I did with Denny and with Deandra. I mean, I really watched after them. I, I looked after their grades. I would ask their teachers, hey, if they start messing up in class, can you send me a letter or an email? Um, and it's important. It, that those are the hallmark moments that most people don't realize with these kids that if you don't step up at that moment mm -hmm. it's going to be too late when they're 21 22 right. and a lot of times it is too late but um if it wasn't for people like you uh, myself working with the kids juveniles um we give them hope you know we give them hope we give them a certain amount of um accomplishments um I know that uh, when you were talking about Bob Rikivi and Denny, that that they had gotten s selected, or mm -hmm. you had them apply, or yeah, I had them apply for the uh, forty. It's a Superfly forty-eight hour filmmaking competition, and, and it's in Seattle, Washington, and they only choose fifty kids throughout the United States. And I had called them and said, you know, do you have any more space? And they were like, I th I think we're all booked up, and I begged and pleaded for them to just look at the applications. I go, just look at them, because even if you reject them, I can say, well, hey, they read it, and yada, mm -hmm. yada, yada. So I had the girls fill out you know, the applications, and long story short, they got picked. Wow. And we got to fly out to Seattle and be a part of this fi uh, filmmaking competition, and Denny got chosen as a lead actress, in one because they split the kids up into four groups. Mm -hmm. And in every group, there's a director, writer, producer, actor, lead actor. And Denny got chosen as a lead actor, a uh, lead actress in one of the projects. And I was there when she auditioned, and she did a, she was incredible. I was like, <laughs> oh, where's this acting ability coming from, you know? <laughs> and uh, she did such a great job. And I don't, I don't know if she realizes how incredible everything that she did was. Um, I didn't do that at her age. I wasn't there. Uh, I didn't make my first film until I was 38 years old. And for her to be doing what she's doing at 16, um, 17 maybe, uh, it's just, it's incredible. Right. R regardless of whether she decides to go into media or not, you know, no matter what she does, these are the experiences that are going to carry her there. Okay. Uh, so it was incredible to see a young Autumn girl be the first, you know, out of her tribe. And I'm, I'm, I'm just so appreciative that I get to be a part of that, you know that I'm a part of, of the first of this tribe. Yeah, and uh, let's bring her on, and uh, we'll talk to Denny about her.
trip to... Yes, we will. <laughs> we'll embarrass her a little bit. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's been waiting all day to embarrass her. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll be right back. And we're back to Native Talk. My name is Caroline Felicity Anton. I'm the host. Well, we have Denny, and she was one of the ones that got picked to go to Seattle. Yes. And how was your trip? It was different. Um, it was very, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I flew for the first time. That was kind of scary at first. Was John with you? Yeah. That would have been even more terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> was he scaring you? Yes. Yes, he was. He was over-exaggerating everything before we got on the plane. I was so terrified that we are going to be rumbling and tumbling everywhere. <laughs> <sighs> but after the flight, first flight, it was all right. I got pretty used to it right away. Were you surprised that you got picked? Yes, very. I really filled out, literally just filled out the application thinking, oh, well, just do it. Just, I wasn't really trying to. Have you ever done anything like that before? Uh, once, um, they had a workshop in Tapawa at the Cultural Museum. And it was for uh, it was I was signed up to be for a photography workshop, but it turned out it was a filmmaking workshop. Oh wow! And I went through with that, and that was my first time making a movie, and I somewhat directed it and kind of acted in it, and it was called Life. I wrote it basically. Well, we had a whole group, and they all pitched in their ideas, and we just came up with this movie. And so, where's that at now? Uh, it's still <laughs> Is it at your local theaters? No. <laughs> um, <clears throat> actually, I never went back to sign the release form, so I never got oh. it. Well, um, maybe that's something that we should do and put some on the, yeah. On the show. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> and uh, that was the very first time. And the second time was with John in the class. Mm -hmm. um, that and was how was that? Movie. That was hectic. <laughs> it was very hard. The, I don't know. It was very different from the workshop. Mm -hmm. And then when we went to Seattle, it was way different than the workshop and the class. Um, it was more well put together, mm -hmm. the whole everything. Because in the workshop, they just uh, kind of basically threw it at us and said, do it. And that didn't really help a lot. And then yeah. <laughs> well, filmmaking, I know it takes a long time to learn in regular classes. Um, I know I have some people that are going to school for filming, uh, writing, and all that stuff, and it takes for days. And so, like, when you have it at school, you only have a short time to do it in. And I remember, John, <laughs> you were saying you only you only had, like, five minutes one time, and you were like, and we're almost to the end. And yeah. I'm like, all year for five minutes? We had hour and 40 minutes. Uh, I would get them for an hour and 40 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. And eventually the groups would, you know, slow, like the ones that could do it would do it and the ones that couldn't, couldn't. And then, uh, you know, we had groups that stuttered a little bit. Uh, but it, it's hard, you know, mm -hmm. only with an hour and 40 minutes to try and teach kids how to make a film and then right. have them do it. And I only had three months to do it in. So. Right, because I also work with a group of kids, and a lot of them sometimes don't come. So the ones that are there have to step up and do yeah. that person's job, and then you ha you're reteaching as well. So. Yeah, and that's I think that's something that Denny learned also is that she was dependent on her actors and writers and people that she needed, and sometimes they weren't there. And when they weren't there, everything just kind of stopped, and you're yeah. like, okay, great, what do I do now? <laughs> So it teaches the kids how important every person is. Right, and how good your word is that you're going to be there. So what was your um, experience in terms of working with other non-natives? Um, was it different? Was it no, harder? No, it was pretty much the same. Um, my, hmm, how can I put this? They stepped up more mm -hmm. than my friends did back in Tupelo. And I, th I think part of it too was that these, the ones that went wanted to be there and wanted to do this. Yes. 
and it's whereas in a classroom it's just kind of we'll see who wants to yeah, yeah. that was kind of how they put it out there too is whoever wants to go go ahead and go mm -hmm. and that's how they put the class together basically right they just made an announcement one afternoon and everybody went and pretty much like 90 percent <laughs> dropped out by the end of the class why do you think they dropped out um, a lot of different reasons. Some of them were involved with other school activities like mm -hmm. um, FFA and just other things, sports. Um, a lot of them were seniors who were graduating and who needed to catch up on their credits. So uh, that was one thing that held them back. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what was the, the best experience you had when you went to Sa Seattle <coughs> or something that you didn't, you didn't, um, think was going to happen or just um, all in all just going just going just going to Seattle going to somewhere different you know the land was beautiful out there I like mm -hmm. it out there the weather was nice and made it real easy to adjust to mm -hmm. and I liked it out there do you and think do you think you'll be going into filmmaking yeah I think so I already made up my mind like a couple of years ago that I would want to be a filmmaker and is your family supportive Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> Are you making film? Are you yeah, uh, actually filming them? <laughs> no, it's it started since I was a little girl. Uh, my my mom, my grandmother, my whole family always knew that I would be an actress because I was so dramatic, <laughs> very dramatic. And my mom, I don't know, I guess I knew how to talk by the time I was like one or two or something like that. And people would kind of be freaked out by that because here I was this little one-year-old girl having a conversation <laughs> with <laughs> a grown adult and <laughs> it was pretty weird and I guess I just picked up a lot of things yeah. and I'm just dramatic <laughs> they <laughs> well it helps yeah. in the film industry See, and this is what's important is that kids like Denny that have this desire to do what they want to do and giving them the option to be able to do it and a lot of you know being native we didn't have those options right. and our, our uncles and aunts and uh, parents didn't have like they would say I want to be a baseball player or a lawyer but she knew there was no way in heck that was gonna happen and now that you know she has this desire and having the ability to be able to be taught how to do that mm -hmm. and then go do it I mean that's it that's what we want for our children right. and you know discovering the talents that are within her because her thing may not be school Mm -hmm. or being scholastic or being an attorney or having a blue collar job you know she may not be successful in that area but media I feel that's what she's gonna do real well and, right. and giving her that opportunity is, is important and I think also by learning the the talents or skills you also have John and John has a lot of connections he may not look like it but <laughs> <laughs> Wow. He has a lot of connections to different things like like setting that up, you know, because that takes a lot to for him to actually encourage you to do that. He must have believed in you to do that. Yeah, I thought it was pretty weird for some strange guy to follow me around campus all day. <laughs> Now, that doesn't sound too yeah, good. <laughs> Danny, that doesn't sound very good at all. <laughs> I mean, I mean that's sometimes that's just how I see things. But, you know, <laughs> it's pretty awkward if you ask me. And that was just trying to get you back into school. Yeah. Yeah, and it wasn't, it, you know, uh, I'll be honest, it wasn't just me. A lot of the teachers and staff there speak highly of Denny. Mm -hmm. And they know how intelligent she is and the potential she has. So that kind of alerted me, but they had come to a point with her where they just didn't know what to do with her anymore because she had stopped listening. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I'll just bug her, I'll just bother until she breaks, <laughs> until she attacks me or something. <laughs> uh, and luckily she didn't. Luckily, you know, she has that intellect to know, okay, maybe I should just go do this. Maybe this is for the better. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to be a teenager. It's hard to justify that I remember that and there's still a part of me that I think is a teenager because <laughs> it's hard for me to understand what's good and bad uh, but and and this is these are the kids that we need to start focusing on mm -hmm. that we're not focusing on uh, she comes from the Thonal Nation 
and that's a huge tribe and they really need to start supporting their up and coming talent and that's what she is and who she could be I don't know she could be someone great mm -hmm. she could get there real quick with the help of the tribe and the community and the school but they've got to back her up in every way possible and right now that's not being done I mean the school Baba Kibri they have me there they're paying me to be there that's a part of the support for her mm -hmm. but eventually when she starts making her own movies she's gonna need equipment she's gonna need money she's gonna need you know reliable staff mm -hmm. that will help her with her projects and uh, that's got to come through the tribe there's mm -hmm. no other there's no nice way to say it mm -hmm. you know uh, this is a filmmaker that's gonna need money to help her you know to pay her rent to pay the electricity to get a car to have transportation to have a laptop and the things that she's gonna need to succeed in media and we need and I'm saying this directly, where's the camera? I'm saying this directly <laughs> to the tribe. Uh, we need your help, she needs your help. And if you want to see awesome movie stars in the next 10, 15 years, this is where it starts, right here. And if they don't support, you can't complain about anything because you weren't there supporting her at the beginning when she needed it. Mm -hmm. What was um, going on that you weren't going to school, may I ask? Um, at the time, my brother passed away. <laughs> That was really hard. Yeah. So when you when you do stuff and you correct things and you decided to go back to school, um, was it a something that struck you that maybe <coughs> your brother wouldn't want you to do that? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, he always he was always asking me if I was in class doing my work high good grades, you know. He was always asking me that stuff. So I knew he'd want me to stop moping around and just mm -hmm. and just um go back to school and finish what I need to do. Right. And I think a lot of times when kids are acting up that we don't just judge them right away. Yeah. I mean we gotta find out, you know, what what's going on in their lives and how can we support them. Like you said sometimes us adults are so busy in our own world that we're not taking the time to say hey what's going on instead of just trying to scold them or punish them into well, yeah. doing something that's the immediate reaction is punishing mm -hmm. and that doesn't do well at all I'll, I'll be the first to tell <laughs> you that I was punished a lot when I was a kid uh, but there is an attitude that I take in my class where I tell the kids I don't care about your drama I don't care about what's the most important thing project you know <laughs> that's what I tell them that's all they hear from me now obviously when there's a death in the family or there's something huge I do care about that but I can't care about the other stuff like you know boyfriend girlfriend drama or he said she said or I don't like mm -hmm. I don't like that gang and they don't like me or drug dealing or drugs in my class I don't care about that I don't want it in my class and I just it's it's kind of like the golden rule mm -hmm. and it teaches these kids that some of their teenage drama doesn't mean anything to me mm -hmm. Uh, but what's going on in their life? It does. You have to. Right. I mean, family comes first, especially in an Indian community. You know, right. you're nothing without your family, and mm -hmm. that's got to come first. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you can't let that stop you, because we lose loved ones all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I buried 17 children in my career, and if I would have let their death stop me, that would have been a disservice to them. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing for them that they need to realize there is going to be tragedy in their lives. Right. There's going to be hard times. There's going to be financial hard times. Uh, but you can't let that dominate your life. You can't let that stop you. And you, you've got to keep moving forward. And that's a learned skill. Mm -hmm. You just don't have that. Mm -hmm. You're taught that. And some of these kids may not have been taught that. Right. Native kids, res kids are resilient to a point. Definitely. You know, but at some time, Again, I'm, I'm reiterating myself, but we have to start helping our kids. And we may look at res kids like, oh, they're tough. They've gone without. That doesn't mean that it's right. right. <laughs> you know, yeah. because Denny might have gone without doesn't mean that she doesn't want. Or if she had the stuff that she needs, how would that affect her life and her family's life? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's, it's an exp exponential growth that happens when Denny becomes successful. If Denny becomes successful, then more than likely some of her family members are going to become successful and if her family becomes successful then the tribe itself will gain pride from that and become more successful mm 
So this is it. These are the seeds that we need to start planting. And there's a lot of people within the native, you know, where the money is that are a little short-sighted, that they want to see more, I guess, from the kids. Mm -hmm. and it's like, you know what, this is all you're going to get, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so invest now, you know, before she becomes too big and she doesn't want your help and she's not going to do anything for the tribe because there's going to be this resentment there because the tribe didn't help her when she needed it most, which is right now, like now, today. Mm -hmm. Well, Denny, um, I'm really <coughs> proud, of you, proud of you for um, stepping up to the plate. I know, I know at some point it is your choice, and y you obviously made a good choice by going back to school and making that change for yourself and for your family because as we know you're not only making that choice for yourself you're making it for your family and you rep representing us in Seattle and I and John talks nothing but good stuff you know um, he acts like he doesn't know or care sometimes <laughs> but he does and he he brags he brags about you and I feel proud, you know, because I, I left the res thinking I was never going to come back. And now I'm back and I get to interview uh, talented, gifted people on my show. And, and um, John has been an incredible help to us down there. And so what are your future plans? Um, to finish school mm -hmm. first. That's the main thing. Go to college, you know, start working with media and filmmaking. Um, there's a lot of um, programs or different productions now that are com starting to come out. Um, I usually email when they have um, auditions and stuff. Will you be auditioning or will you just go strictly to school and then start? Yeah, I think I would go to school first. Um, that's always been what's been thrown at me is to just go to school, <laughs> go to school, finish school, please finish school. <laughs> right. So. You know, I think that's one thing I'd rather do first. Just, Great. you know, just to have something, mm -hmm. you know. Well, it never hurts to have a high school diploma. <laughs> <laughs> and then especially if you go to college, you'll have more education in terms of uh, filmmaking. Um, I, I know I did, I did go to one drama class. <laughs> and that drama class was so much fun. I never knew you had to be so, um, it's a touchy class. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the strange thing about it because I, I thought drama, you know, you, you always have your space, and, but it was a very, we always had to hold hands, we always had to bump into each other, we always had to interact, and it was very touchy, and that was the thing that surprised me the most yeah, about acting. As, as Denny directs, she's starting to learn <coughs> about the reality of, of getting somebody to act for you and mm -hmm. act the way you want them to act. Because mm -hmm. it's so easy to, well, I shouldn't say it's easy, but you write a script and you know how you want it to go and then you put your actors there and they don't quite sound like you want them to sound or give you that emotion that you want. Mm -hmm. And Denny's learning now that you've got to go to your actor and say, no, I want this. I need you to sound like this or feel this. Uh, and that's part of a young director's growth right there is getting what you want from your actors <laughs> so there is it's a lot of hands-on it is touchy-feely and you know when I did the yes is better than no there's a part where I read a not read but I was supposed to say like a prayer mm. and um, I guess I just sounded like I read it off the script and so they came back into the studio and they were saying w what are you doing in your tribe and I said I work for the alcoholism well what are they doing and they ended up making me cry, and I and then I reread um, yeah. the thing, and I, I guess it came out really, really good, and I was still crying, and then they said, great, stop. <laughs> I'm, I'm back there crying, because I'm like, you know, you just can't stop it. But at the same time, they got what they needed out of me. Yeah, they're, they're evoking that emotion out of you, and that's <laughs> a director's job, is to evoke that emotion out of their actors, to get that you know, moment on film, you know. And I was still crying and they were all happy and they walked <laughs> off yeah, from me no, and I'm you, going, <laughs> <laughs> stop. 
still sitting there with tears running down my face. So yeah, it it is kind of. Denny had to do a crying scene in, oh, a, did she? in the yes, movie. I played her hard. dad. <laughs> <laughs> that and was very hard. I know exactly how you feel. Cause it's just like all your emotions are brought out in front of everybody. And there's this big old crowd in front of you, and you're just like. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want to cry, but you know you have to for the movie, mm -hmm. and and I was one thing, and John made everybody go away, which made it a little bit easier yeah. to have less people around, and oh, that was so hard. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. Right when I first read the script, I was like, no, I have to do a <laughs> crying scene. <laughs> but I knew I could do it. I always knew I could do it, yeah. but it's just the actual crying. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, I heard you had to do a screaming. Yeah, <laughs> audition. Audition. Yeah, that was a little weird. Would you Would you do that for us now? Yeah. Need chairs. Yeah, I need folding chairs. Yeah. <laughs> That's one thing I can't do: scream. She had to do it over and over oh, again. I know. And and she like did it so well every time. I was like. Can we stop now? <laughs> I mean, seriously, they kept bringing in more people. Come look at this, look at this. Do it now. And I'm like, now? And I don't know, it's weird to have to, to pretend that somebody's chasing you with a knife or something oh, wow. when they're really holding a spatula. <laughs> you want to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's just, it's kind of ridiculous. But I guess when you're on the other side of it, it looks good. Yeah, and the cool thing about it was she competed against other kids and mm -hmm. she didn't get the part because she was a native. She got the part because she was the best actor. Right. And, you know, and that's something that we need to keep putting our kids through. Mm -hmm. You know, the kids that I'm working with is those <coughs> success and failures, if you even want to see them as failures. Mm -hmm. But they need to start competing against others to see that they are, they're, they are up there with other kids, mm -hmm. that they have an ability that's better than most. Uh, and it's when you get that kind of recognition that you're like you start to feel good about yourself and that mm -hmm. you can do something Right, but it takes opportunity to put the kids in those situations <laughs> So we're gonna have a actress on our reservation <laughs> So if you get popular will you come back to my show? <laughs> sure <laughs> Deal you better get that in writing <laughs> <laughs> Well, I really appreciate you being here, and um, John, thank you for coming, and I hope that you guys both come back again. We will. Thank you. Thank you.